celebration. It is great that you would join us. I just want to say that it is always a joy to have people part of the service and thank you so much for just uh, you know contributing by joining in and commenting. It means a lot to me and our leadership team. Do you know this is a great day? This is like a big day for all Christians around the world. Uh, that's the reason why I've got on this really nice you know loud shirt. It's, it's bright, it's colorful because today is a big day for us. In fact, this is probably the biggest uh, day in the Christian calendar and it means a lot to me that you would join us on this great day. Um, why is Easter so important? Well, let me tell you why today is so important. It's because what took place on this day some 2,000 years ago was proof that what Jesus started on Friday, He completed it. He accomplished what He started. When Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins, Right, The resurrection of Jesus on this day is a proof, it is a sign that what He did was accomplished. Well, let me just put it this way here. Have you ever started a project before? Like, have you ever gone to Ikea and, and, and purchased something at Ikea? Maybe the famous uh, Ikea rocking chair. You know the one I'm talking about, right? The one that every household we've got. It's the uh, uh, Poang, the Poang rocking chair, right? Now, have you ever looked at the Poang rocking chair when you, you buy from Ikea? It comes in a flat pack, yeah? It comes, you've got to assemble. Now, you know, it's going to be a tough gig. You know, it's going to be a long journey. You know, it's going to take you at least five hours to get this rocking chair so the family can enjoy it. But nothing's going to stop you, right? Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to go for it. You're going to get your little hex key out. You can get your screwdriver out. You're going to try to read the menu. And then you can try to make sure that you assemble this rocking chair. But let me ask you this question. How do you know if that rocking chair, right, was completed? How? I mean, you can't say, well, because it looks like a rocking chair. Well, maybe what looks like a rocking chair to you may not be a rocking chair to me. How, how can you tell? Unless your family enjoy it, right? Unless your family would, what? sit on it, your kids would lean back and rock and have a great time, you know, using this rocking chair. Well, it's the same thing with, with Easter. It's the same thing with today. And how do we know that what Jesus started, right, on Friday was completed, was accomplished? Well, only through the resurrection. And that's the reason why, you know, the Apostle Paul once wrote this to the church in Corinth. If you have your Bible, you can go there with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Verse 14, look what, look what the Apostle Paul would say. And if Christ had not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. You see that? I mean, if Christ never came back to life, if Christ was still dead, you know, if he was still buried six feet under, then my preaching, the gospel that I proclaim week in and week out, our faith, the Christian faith, it is useless. But you know what? Because he is risen, because he is alive, our faith is meaningful. It means that what I preach, this message of hope that I have for you today, it is true. It is authentic. It is real. It is an invitation for you to be part of this good news, this gospel that God has offered to everyone. That's the reason why today is a great day. That's the reason why today we're so excited. We're so happy. Not because of the Easter eggs. I mean, I know my kids are excited because, you know, they're going to look for the Easter eggs later on. But really, it's more than that. It's proof that what Christ did on Friday, when He went to the cross to die for our sin, His resurrection is proof. It is proof that what He did accomplished the task of allowing us to be in relationship with the Father, allowing us to be guilt-free, condemnation-free, sin-free, to stand righteous before God, so that one day when we meet God, God will just smile, and God will say, well, I love you. Thank you so much for trusting Jesus. Thank you so much for believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. That's our hope. And that's why today is a great day. I mean, that's the message that we should hear every time we, we watch or we tune into a church service around the globe. This is the message. It is a great day because the resurrection is proof that what Jesus did was completed. Well, Maybe right now you're like, well, Ben, I, I don't know. I, I don't trust you. Well, Ben, I, I don't know whether I believe that he's still alive. In fact, you might have questions like, well, I mean, I know that he's alive. I know it in my head, but I don't feel it in my heart. Or, or maybe you're like, well, I'm just not a Christian, Ben. I mean, this good message here, this Easter, it's, it's for the Christian. I'm a non-Christian. This doesn't mean anything to me. Well, you know what? I've, I've got a great message for you. I've got a message of hope 
which hopefully will answer all those questions. But the only way to do that is for us to go back 2,000 years ago and look at the very first Easter Sunday. Is to go back there and see what happened. What took place three days after Jesus took his last breath. So that's what we'll do this day. So if you have your Bible, turn with me now to Luke 24. We're going to go to Luke's account of the gospel in chapter 24. If you don't have your Bible, it's, it's okay because the, the passage will be on the screen below me. So if you have your Bible, let's go there. Luke 24 verse 1. Are you ready? Here we go. On the first day of the week. So that's on Sunday. All right, Friday, Jesus died on Sunday, the first day of the week. Very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. So right now, we've got some ladies. You know, if you read later on in the same chapter or the other gospel account, we know it's uh, the ladies who were very close to Jesus. Mary Magdalene, we had Mary, the mother of James, you know, Jesus' mother. We had Joanne. These were like really close ladies. These ladies would have seen the miracles of Jesus, heard the teaching of Jesus. These ladies would have witnessed also the last breath of Jesus. Now, they loved Jesus so much that what they wanted to do was go and look for Jesus with some spices, right? Hopefully to maybe preserve his body a, a bit longer, maybe to use the spices to maybe mask the smell of rotten, the rotten decaying body. But they would go there on this Sunday morning. But look what happened when they got there. Verse 2, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. So there was this huge stone which would have been used to uh, cover the entrance to the tomb to stop people from coming in. This huge stone was rolled away. They're a bit shocked, so they decide to walk in to see what was going on. So, verse 3, but when they entered, right, they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, what, what, what kind of surprised me was when I was reading this, I thought, well, maybe these ladies, they forgotten what Jesus told them when he was still with them. I mean, Jesus did say to them that he would, you know, die, that he would die for the sins of this world, that he would, you know, give up his life for, for everyone as a ransom. But then Jesus did say that in three days, he'll come back to life. I mean, Jesus told that to his disciple. Jesus shared that message to his close one. And these ladies, they, they, they should have known, right? I mean, like I was thinking about this, like Jesus, he, he made it very clear. You know, I'm going to die, but in three days, you know, I'll be back. I was just thinking, imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? The, the great Austrian actor playing the role of a muscly Jesus. He says to the disciple and these ladies, you know what? I'm going to die. I'm going to die. But in three days, I'll be back. I'll be back. You know, he would have said that. And I'm pretty sure that they would have remembered, they should have remembered that. But for some reason, they didn't. Like when they got there, like no one, like Mary Magdalene should have said, oh, I know why the tomb is uh, empty because he's alive. She didn't say that. I mean, I would have thought maybe Mary, the mother of Jesus, would have said, hey, remember what he said? He, he did say he'll come back to life in three days. That's the reason why he's not there. But uh -uh, none of them, none of them said that. For some reason, it was like they, they'd forgotten what Jesus shared, what Jesus told them. But look what happened. You know, they, they get into the tomb, look in verse 4, and while they were wondering about this, like they were figuring, they were scratching their heads, like, what's going on? Where is Jesus? Did someone steal the body of Jesus? Where is he? They forgot that this Jesus is alive. Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleam with lightning stood before them. Well, there was these two Men, now, we know that they weren't men. They were actually angels, right? Right? In, in verse 5, in their fright, the ladies bowed down, right? They bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Now, we know that these men are angels because in the other gospel account, uh, we are told they're angels. Well, well, let's just go to John, all right? John's account from John's angle in John chapter 20, verse 12. Let's go there. You know, and saw two angels, see, two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been. You know, so I was thinking, you know, well, I was a bit disappointed when I read this during the week because I thought, well, these ladies, they, sh they should have known. I mean, these were angels and, and God would always send angels uh, as a messenger to tell the reality of God to his people. He's always done that. Remember, like in the Old Testament, when Abraham was about to sacrifice, you know, Isaac, well, God sent an angel and the angel told Abraham to not do it. So a, a, angels were sent, sent by God as a messenger to tell people of the reality of God. And, and right here, these ladies just totally forgot about it. They forgot these were angels and they were scared. 
And I was thinking about Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. I mean, she should have known better. Right? I think about it. She's experienced an angel before. She's encountered an angel when she was told by an angel she'll be pregnant and she'll give birth to Jesus. I mean, like, she should know better. Like, here she is, frightened, head down, bowed down, not quite sure what's going on. And I was like, a bit disappointed with these ladies. Well, let's, let's continue on, right? In verse 6, He is not here. He has risen. So these angels said to the ladies, He's not here. He has risen. Remember how He told you while He was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. You know, these angels were saying to the ladies, Don't you remember? Don't you remember what He said? He's not here. He's risen. Like he told you all that he's going to die. He's going to be crucified. But in three days later, he'll be alive. And then in verse 8, and then, right, they remember his words. You see, verse 8, it was the aha moment. It's like, ah, that's right. Jesus did say that he will come back, that he will be alive. And I was thinking about this and I, I just want to say this at the very start of my message that I am not out here to crucify or grill these ladies. Okay, that's not my intent. All right. I know it seems a bit like that. So I don't want any hate emails or hate mail sent to me or people messaging me saying, Oh, Pastor Ben, you're so sexist. You don't like these ladies. You're having a go at these ladies. You know, you're so mean and cruel. I mean, this is Mary, the mother of Jesus. No, that's not my intent. All right. That's not my intent. What I want you to know is this is that sometimes you and I, and I'm preaching to myself, sometimes we're like these ladies. You know, sometimes uh, when life gets a bit difficult and there's a curveball in life, and whether it's some form of suffering or maybe it's the pandemic we're in right now, when life gets a bit too busy, too hectic, uh, we're like these ladies and we forget the promises of Jesus. We forget the promises of God. We forget what God has told us in the Bible, the voice of God. Maybe for some of you as I'm preaching, as I'm sharing this message, you're like, yeah, I can relate to that, Bin. I mean, uh, I remember a day many years ago when I was so passionate about Jesus. Maybe that's you. Like, you're like, well, I remember the time when it was such a joy to read the Bible, to open up the Bible. And, and, and as I read the Bible, I'm actually hearing the voice of God. Or, you know, it was a delight. Uh, it was just pure joy when it came to praying and speaking to God. Um, but now it seems like all that stuff are just head knowledge. It's just up here somewhere and it's not down your heart. Maybe for some of us, um, along the way, along this journey here, we have been hurt by people in church. Maybe you uh, have been offended by someone. Or maybe, you know, you've just grown up. Or maybe... Um, you just don't remember um, the promises of God anymore. And you're like these ladies that, yeah, you, you've heard these promises. You've, you've heard them. You kind of know the, 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 the gospel. You kind of remember the, the story of Easter. You, you know that there is a Jesus who died and he rose back again in three days. But deep down, it doesn't mean anything to you. Well, you know what? I, I want you to know that um, what was recorded in Luke is to help you and I understand that uh, God, He doesn't give up on us. And I want to show you that in the text. Because as we look through here in the very first Easter, we had Mary Magdalene. We had Mary, the mother of James, and you know Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, Joanne. These were godly ladies. These were ladies who spent a lot of time with Jesus. I mean, they were very close to Jesus. I mean, they should have known better, right? They should know. I mean, they would have heard the promises of Jesus probably weeks ago, you know, prior to the death of Jesus. But for some reason, they, they forgot. They forgot. They, in their, I guess, uh, despair in, in the, the crucifixion of Jesus, they totally forgot the promises of God. And when they came looking for Jesus, they just totally forgot that He was alive. And you know what? I mean, come on. If they made their mistakes and you and I would make the same mistake that we've forgotten the promises of God, I'm pretty sure that uh, if God can forgive them, surely God can forgive you and I. And you notice how in the text right here, what did God do? I mean, God sent two angels just to remind them the promises of God. And God did not give up on these ladies. They were very close to Jesus and God did not give up on them. I mean, think about that. I mean, you would have thought that these ladies, they should know a lot better, right? 
but they didn't. And if God didn't give up on Mary, Magdalene, Mary and Joanna, all these ladies here, surely God would never give up on you and I. I mean, we, we are pretty bad people, right? And I'm pretty sure that there are moments where we've totally forgotten about the, the promises of God. But I want you to know that God has never forgotten you. And God will always send a messengers to, to tell you. And I'm thinking as right, right now as I preach, you know, as I, I share the word of God to you on this glorious day, you know, Easter Sunday, I want you to see me as a, as a messenger from God, as a messenger just reminding you of the promises of God. Like for some of you right now, you're like, yeah, but I, I, I get it. I, I do remember this story, but it means nothing to me. What I want to do now is I want you to just go back to that moment where it meant something to you. And I want you to see me as a messenger from God saying, hey, God hasn't given up on you. God hasn't forgotten you. God is still reminding you of this good news that on that very first Easter, you know what? When Jesus rose, He rose for you. He rose because He loves you so much. He rose because He wanted you to be in relationship with Him, that the death of His Son, the death of Jesus Christ was for you. You know that? And maybe like, well, I still don't believe you've been like, 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 I, I don't know whether God, He really loves me. Maybe He's forgotten about me. Maybe He doesn't forgive me because I've done some really bad things. Well, you know what? Don't trust me. Don't trust me. Trust the Word of God. And let's look at the Word of God. Let's look at the promises of God. And you can make your mind, right? You can come up with your own conclusion whether God still loves you or not. Whether God has forgotten you or, or given up on you or not. Why do we do that? Well, go with me to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The Apostle Paul, he writes this to the, the Christians in Rome. He writes this, But God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see that? Christ never died for you and I when we were good. He didn't wait for us to be holy. He didn't wait for us to be goodies before He died for us. No, the Bible clearly says right here, He died whilst we were still sinners. Like whilst we were so far from God, whilst we were enemies of God, He died for us. I mean, that's how much He loves us. The Bible says He demonstrated His love, His own love for you and I, that whilst we were still sinner, He died for us. I mean, that's the promises of God. That's not my promise to you. That's God's promise to you. That no matter where you are right now, whatever journey you are, how far you think you are from God, I want you to know that God died for you. So that you can experience His love, that you can be in relationship with Him. Or how about 2 Corinthians 5.21? Let's go there. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made Him, the Him here is Jesus, who had no sin. Because remember, Jesus was perfection. Jesus didn't have sin to be sin for us. You see that? Jesus took on our sin. But God allowed that to take place for us. So that in Him, that's in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. You see it right there? God gave up His own Son so that His Son would take on sin for us. The Bible says right there, for us, so that we, that's you and I, may be righteous before God. I mean, that's the promises of God. Like if you're thinking right now, well, I am so far from God. I mean, God doesn't want anything to do with me. God, doesn't, God shouldn't love me. I want you to know that when Jesus rose from the grave, He rose for you, that He took on your sin so that you and me, we can stand right before God the Father. That's the promises of God. That's not my word. That's God's word for you. Or how about John 3.16? Yeah, God so loved the world that He gave up Jesus. He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him. Come on. It's just believing. It's putting your trust. It's putting your faith and your hope on the cross. You will have eternal life. That's the promises of God. God has forgotten you. God has never let you go. God still loves you. His love for you would never change. It doesn't alter. I want you to know that. I want you to understand that. And I get it for some of us. I get it. You know, we, we feel like, like, like the Easter message was, was something of the past or maybe that day when we really had a good connection with God. But today it means nothing to us. Today it's just another holiday. It's a, a long weekend. Today it's just an excuse for us to go to church and, and say hi to the past and say, well, pastor, I've done my, you know, once a year church gig. No, I want you to know that He still loves you. I want you to know that He, he cares about you. I want you to know that he, he died for you and that He hasn't given up on you. That He's constantly sending messengers to remind you that He loves you. And, and right now as you listen to me, I really believe that I'm a messenger from God. I'm sending you a message from God that God loves you and God's promises for you it hasn't changed. It hasn't altered yet. And it will never alter. He still loves you. In fact, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ was for you so that He could take away the sting of death. 
so that you don't have to be afraid of death, so that if you do pass away one day, you can enjoy Him forevermore because the promises of God is that He died for you and He rose for you because the resurrection is proof that the death of Jesus Christ took away all your sins, cleared all your sin, and the sting of death is no longer there. And I want you to know that. That's the reason why today is a good day. That's the reason why I'm so excited. That's the reason why today every Christian around the world, we're so excited because we know the resurrection is the proof that what Jesus did on Friday, He accomplished it. Man, He he accomplished it with flying colors. You know, I'm reminded of a story, a famous story of a father and a son. They were driving. As they were driving along a road, it got a bit hot, so the father wind down the window. And as he was driving and talking to his son, this bee flew into the car. And now the bee is just buzzing inside the car and the little boy, he is panicking because the boy had this reaction, had this allergic reaction. It was quite lethal. If a bee was to sting him, he would you know, seriously be sick. So the boy is frantically screaming and shouting and, you know, so afraid that the bee might sting him. So the father quickly grabbed the bee with his hand and then he let the bee go. But the bee didn't die. The bee still still, uh, flew around the the car and the boys were still frantically so afraid. He was screaming, going, Dad, Dad, the bee's still alive. The bee's going to get me. And the father knew that the the son was quite afraid. He, He told the son to look at his hand. Look at the palm of his hand. And as the boy looked inside the palm of his hand, the boy noticed that the the stinger was against the palm of the father's hand. And the father said to the boy that the bee won't get you because the stinger is in my hand. Oh, that when Jesus died and when he rose again, the sting of death is no longer there. We don't have to be afraid of death. We don't have to be afraid of what is around the corner because we know that God has got this. In fact, we can have peace. We can have joy. We can have a future hope knowing that God is in control. He's taken away the sting of death when Jesus died and rose again. The resurrection is a reminder for you and for me that we are never to be afraid of death, that we are in connection with God and that we will enjoy God forevermore. He loves you so much. He cares for you so much. He took away the sting of death so that you can have peace with the Father. He did that because He loves you. And I want you to know that. And maybe right now for some of you, you're like, well, Ben, I, 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 I want to have a new start. Well, Ben, I, I want to make this day the fresh start. I want to encourage you to do that. It is Easter Sunday. This is a great day to start over again. This day can be a new beginning for you. This is the day where you get to reconnect with God and say, God, I am so sorry that in the past, you know, I kind of remembered the Easter story, but it didn't really mean anything to me. But I know today that you died for me. You rose for me and I have peace with you. And I'm so glad that you did it for me. Today, you can start again. Today, you can say, I want to reconnect with you. I want to start my journey with you again, God. And maybe for some of us, you... You're like, well, I I don't know Jesus. I don't know whether He loves me or not. Well, I'm telling you right now, He loves you a lot. And I can say to you that you too can have a relationship with Him. Today, Easter Sunday, can be a new chapter for you. That you too can still welcome Jesus into your world and have Him as your Lord and Savior. Today, we can do it right now. In fact, if that is you, if you're listening to me and you're like saying, well, I'm so glad I heard this message because I'm so glad that you know, Jesus died for me. I'm so glad that Jesus rose for me. I'm so glad that I'm hearing this, that He didn't give up on me. I want Jesus. I need Jesus. If that is you, then what I want to do now is I want to pray for you. And I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray out loud and really believe that as you pray, God is going to do something wonderful in your world right now. So that is you. I'm going to ask you now to close your eyes and bow your head. And as I pray this prayer, will you please pray with me? Pray it out loud. Be bold. And then let me know afterwards. Are you ready? Well, let's pray right now. And dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that Jesus died and rose for me. Thank you for loving me. 
I know that I have messed up and I need your forgiveness. Will you enter into my heart? Will you be my Lord and my Savior? Will you help me to remember the promises over me? Lord, I want this day to be a new beginning. I'm so sorry. Thank you that you love me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can I say that if you've prayed that prayer, and if you really meant that, I want to say, well done. Congratulations. I want you to know that the promises of God over you, it has an altar. God loves you a lot. And if you can do me a huge favor by letting me know or one of the hosts know so that we can follow up and give you some next steps. You know, it's a great decision if you made that decision. Well, thank you so much for listening to what I have to share. I hope what I share has been an encouragement to you. You know, if it's the, if there's one thing I want to leave with you is simply this. It is a great day. This is Easter Sunday because His death, His resurrection was for you and for me. He died for us so that we get to live with Him forevermore. His resurrection is proof that what He did on the cross was accomplished. And may we never forget the promises of God. Thank you. Have a great day.